I'm extremely happy. I mean, we were very optimistic about this meeting, but what we are seeing is uh, better than any expectation we had. Uh, it's full of people. The sessions are crowded. The I mean, the basis is the quality of the presentations. We have uh, superb data. I was totally amazed to see the number of late-breaking abstracts that were submitted mm -hmm. and very high-quality data. So we have phase three studies that are going to be practice changing. They are here. And then, uh, as you said, the, the level of interaction of talking and, and people from different disciplines there, I mean, that's exactly what we had hoped for, but it's even better than what we had anticipated, so we're very pleased. I, I think they are. I think uh, also what we have done here is that we have integrated some of the basic talks in the in our main sessions. So uh, what we are seeing increasingly is these se sessions in which you have your basic scientists and then your clinicians. So the idea is for the clinicians to get to know the language and also to understand uh, what's happening in the lab. And we had some beautiful examples of that. Um, we had the presentation by David Lane in the in the opening uh, speech. That was phenomenal. I mean, he went through P53, the history, where we are. Uh, today we had uh, several talks, but the one by Alan Ashworth, I thought it was phenomenal. The, the history of BRCA1 and BRCA2 and PARP inhibitors. Now, this story, only a year ago, was something that we thought, well, it's interesting, but how is that affecting us? But today, uh, this is fundamental knowledge because we have inhibitors in the clinic that are working. So these clinicians have to understand that. So I think uh, we are achieving our goals uh, and uh, I mean, there's much more to do. Now the track, uh, the tracks in these meetings, we're talking a lot about tailoring therapies for our patients. But we ought also to tailor uh, the meetings to our attendees. So the tracks is basically tailoring the meeting to the needs of a uh, of of particular group of, of of participants, you know. So that's what I think it's so successful. You people can choose and people can be uh, easy to identify uh, based on their areas of interest which sessions uh, they can attend. Well, we have a lot of projects. Uh, we are deeply involved in new anti her 2 therapies. So we have from phase two to phase three data. But also in the lab, we have uh, we are identifying new mechanisms of resistance to, to anti her 2 therapies. And we are doing phase one clinical trials with PA3 kinase inhibitors in combination with anti her 2 agents. So that's very exciting. Now in this meeting, what we are presenting is the first randomized data that shows very clearly that sorafenib is active in breast cancer. And that's a major late-breaking abstract. It's going to be in the presidential session tomorrow. Uh, so that's the first time it has been presented. And uh, that opens a lot of possibilities um, uh, uh, in, 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 in the future, you know. And then finally, I think uh, what it's, it, it keeps me excited is about this possibility of uh, combining in an intelligent way uh, pre uh, 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 molecular targeted agents based on preclinical models and then moving them into the clinic. So we have been working very heavily in the lab combining an antibody against the insulin-like growth factor receptor and mTOR that's been presented here and we are now doing the clinical trial and we are very hopeful so uh, if this translates into the clinic uh, we could see some major activity there.